Hey, and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be making a fisheye lens effect in UE4 and 5. If you like our content or just need a helping hand with your project, join our Discord or even check out our calendar for open slots. We provide one-on-one -on -one sessions where we offer help in 3D asset creation, Unreal blueprints, materials, Steam page setups and more. But with that said, let's get into the tutorial. Alright, so let's make a material by right-clicking and going to material. And let's call this M underscore fisheye lens. And let's jump into this guy. And first things first, let's make this a post-process material like here. And what we're going to be doing is manipulating the UVs of our scene render. So first of all, we need to get our scene. So if we right click and get a scene texture. And if we set this to a post-process input zero like here, plug this guy in here. This will give us our base render just like in here. Now the trick to this effect is that we're going to be manipulating the UVs. So to get our default sort of UVs here, we're going to want to get our screen position. And it's going to be our viewport UV like this. So most of the work is going to be going on in between here. Now a fisheye effect actually manipulates the UVs from the center in a spherical kind of way. So what we need to do is create a radial effect. So if we go up here and right click and create a radial gradient exponential, like this, this guy is going to give us our circle. And just before we do anything else, if we create a named reroute node, just so this is a little bit easier, and we'll call this radial mask, like here. And just so we can see what's going on, if we plug in a radial mask to the output, we get something like this. Now, the only problem we have is that when we stretch the screen, it also stretches the shape. So what we can do is get our screen aligned UVs, which is this guy here. And if we plug in this guy to our UVs, it should solve it. Now, one option we can actually add in here is if we create a switch, like here, and we call this uniform UVs. And if it is uniform, we want to use this guy. But if it's false, we want this to be the 100 by 100. Like this. So that when it's ticked on, it's uniform. And when it's off, it's going to stretch with our screen. Perfect. So we just pop that guy down there. Now before we go any further, if we create some parameters here. So out of radius, if we promote parameter and call this radius and just stick this to 0.5 for now. And if we copy this guy down here and call this radial mask fall off and set this to 1.5 and chuck this guy into the density like this. And just in front of our uh, exponential gradient, if we one minus this, then invert it and then saturate it, we should be good to go. Perfect. So now if we come down to our UVs, like here, we can now use our radial mask to manipulate the UVs. So if we just uh, pop these guys over here a little bit and we get rid of this, we want to make a named rear out node here as well, just for keeping things tidy and let's call this our fisheye lens and we'll chuck our fisheye lens into here cool and what we're going to want to do is multiply this by this guy so if we create multiply by left click and present m chucking this guy into here chucking this guy into here like that we should get an effect but it looks kind of weird, and that's because the UVs need a little bit of offset. So if we subtract from here, like this, and we create a 2 vector by left clicking and pressing 2, like this, and we chuck in 0.5 in each of these. And if we duplicate this guy over here, and we add 
our two vector back in, that should recenter our effect. Cool. But it's looking a little extreme, so let's add some control. So if we drag this guy down here and we lerp, chuck this guy into the alpha. And we want to create two parameters here, the first of which out of the A is going to be called scale center. And let's put this to 1.5 for now. And if we duplicate this guy down, chuck this guy into the B, and let's rename this scale edge. And for now, let's say 0.8. And now all we need to do is chuck this guy into the multiply. Can have this effect, which is pretty cool. So if we apply and save and go into our scene and create an instance out of our material, and we go to our post-process volume, and we add a new element, like here, just drag this guy in here, it should already be working for us. Now, one thing we're going to want to fix is if we kind of look here, if we kind of look at the bottom, it's stretching. Now, the top is stretching. That's because there isn't enough data for it to know what these areas should look like, basically. So a really easy fix for this is if we go just to our lerp here, and just after here, if we multiply like this, and we create a new parameter here, so let's call this master lens scale. And let's just set this to 0.8 for now. Apply and save. And just before we go back into our scene again, if we add these guys to a group, let's call this scale. Like this. If we go back into our scene, go into our instance, like here. You'll see that the edges are gone. And that's just because we're actually enlarging the image overall. So we're kind of bumping it out from the edges, just so the players can't actually see the artifacts. Cool. So one last thing we want to do is if we go back into here, get ourselves a bit of space up here, just to comment this guy and let's say radial mask. We should do the same here. So we'll say fish eye, something like that. One thing we're going to want to add in here is a little bit of darkness around the edge, kind of like a vignette of sorts. And we can actually reuse our radial mask for this. So if we type in radial mask. And all we need to do is lerp with this guy in alpha. And it's going to be between this guy. Like that and a color. So if we left click and press three, we'll get a three vector and we can promote this to parameter and let's call this color. In fact, let's call this outer color. And just for a little bit more control over how uh, visible this color is gonna be, if we lerp this guy and pop this guy into the beat, and for the alpha, what we're going to do is promote this to parameter. And let's call this outer area amount. And for now, let's just make this a one in its value. So now all we need to do is connect this guy up here. And then this guy into here. Now you might get a little error here, and that's because we're comparing a three vector to a four vector. And all we need to do to actually fix that is create a component mask out of our post process zero. Like that. Make sure RGB is ticked on because we're getting rid of the alpha. And just re-plug them up like this. So it should look something like this. Now the only thing I want to add here before we finish up is that this seems a little dark in the center. Uh, so all we need to do is if we drag it here 
and create a power, which is going to let us control the sort of fall off of uh, this sort of effect. We chuck this guy into the alpha. And if we promote this to a primer and call this outer area fall off. And for now, let's say 10. That should sharpen it up nicely. And let's just drag select these guys and chuck them in a, a group. Let's say outer area. And let's stick these guys up here into radius. Perfect. So if we apply and save and go back into our scene, we should have our effect. Uh, let's play about with this a little bit. So uniform here. Tick this guy on and off. We get our sort of eye effect if we want. And then our radius can be brought straight in. So if we want this to be just in a circular area. And bump it in and out. Quite a cool effect. And if you're wanting to get rid of the sort of vignette effect, you can just stick the area amount to zero. And that should give you your clear view. Kind of just depends on the art style that you're going with. You could even change the color to like red if you want, which is kind of cool. You can even control the edges so it becomes a full circle, which is pretty sick. But yeah, that should be the material all set up for you now. I hope you've enjoyed. As I said before, if you like our content or just need a helping hand with your project, join our Discord or check out our calendar for open slots today. We provide one-on-one -on -one sessions where we offer help in 3D asset creation, Unreal blueprints, materials, Steam page setups, and more. But yeah, with that said, see you guys later. Bye.